we got we got the document uh or what now buddy you want to explain that a little bit more to me the uh that whole evidence thing so there was uh there was evidence that was uh, presented uh to the courts and Amir was copied on it uh, you got the document up to share or oh uh, yeah so there's a there's a hard drive involved there's a terabit hard drive and that terabyte is uh, explained as being a phone dump from Mr. DeWitt's phone. And uh, they're suggesting that uh, Amir uh, needs to present a empty one terabit hard drive to, uh, to get the documentation, the evidence that they're uh, entering into evidence. And it's, it's going to be interesting to see <laughs> uh, what all it's going to contain, because if they're calling it a phone dump, uh, that could be everything from phone logs, call logs, videos that are downloaded, uh, text messages. Um, you know, who knows what's in that phone? Uh, so it's going to be <laughs> probably really difficult to explain if they've decided that this much data needs to come uh, wholesale into the court uh, right prior to his trial. So this could be this could seal the deal. Yeah. Yeah. I, I terribly. It's a lot. A, a phone dump of a, ter- a terabyte. That's, I mean, that's mo- what most modern computers have for an entire hard drive capacity, right? Right. Yeah. Yeah. One, one, maybe that's exaggerated. I don't, that number, I don't know. Um, but I mean, the nor- a normal person probably only uses anywhere from what, 40, 50 gigabytes to maybe. 200 i don't know yeah, that's a thousand gigs it's, it's Ren like stuff. who has a phone that's a terabyte yeah yeah, yeah. like Ren i don't know unless gigs. it's like you know pcmd data that they got from the phone company with a warrant that shows you were at this location you made this phone call you sent this text message your phone connected to this tower and this tower and this tower and this tower and all the way down i mean it could be entire transactional logs from every time a phone latched onto a tower while he was traveling outside of his area, which could be specifically calling out all the towers he was in in L.A. and for how long, uh, maybe not so much as to who he, uh, you know, who he contacted, but maybe maybe they're going more for just like where he was. You know, they, they right. may have done some forensic DNA analysis They may have gone down to the phone company, you know, that his actually cell phone provider with a warrant and said, hey, give me all the tower information from this date to this date. And it's a huge file. I mean, I've seen some of it and it's it's big what they get in those uh, discovery requests from their cell provider if they're trying to place you in a certain location. And if he's there for four or five days and his towers, his phone's attached to 50 or 60 towers, that could be a huge amount of data. And that's exactly what it could be. But we don't know. I can't wait to hear. Right. It, so it, it is possible because I'm not familiar with, like I guess, that part of like a cellular technology, but for them to pull like data like that from their towers. Uh, right. Like so, they could they could pull my text message logs, and uh, what websites I've been to. Well, and then beyond that, you know, it's how long were you on those towers, and what was your signal strength? You know, they can triangulate you based on what towers you were connecting to. Because if you got a five five G phone, it's going to connect most likely to two towers at the same time, uh, or two radios within the tower, and by that you got multiple angles, so they can place you on a map. Um, and, you know, and then the whole road trip thing when they went out to, what was it, North Carolina or South Carolina or whatever, when they went on vacation to the, the place that they needed a rental car for. Remember that whole controversy? Right. So, you know, they could have been they, they could track him all the way through the entire time to show exactly where he was. And it totally blows a hole in that whole recorded conversation with Jennifer where he was saying, well, no, it just shows uh it just shows, you know, uh, who I called and uh, and for how long. Well, no, it doesn't. And it shows down to the, you know, how many seconds you were trans- transacted on this tower and how many you were on the next tower and where you were and how, you know, it, it gets the GPS location from, from your phone as well and records it in there. So there's a lot of information that they can get. And that very well could be what they're referring to as the phone dump. Right. And probably, yeah. All right. Yeah. So I'm wondering, in, the, in that data, would there be uh, his location, do you think? Um, yeah, absolutely. Um, I just want to make a, a, a comment to the audience here. That That's enough. Um, we're not going to be making uh, jokes about anybody's physical appearance. And if I see any more of it, I'm going to kick you out of the chat. 
Thank you. All right. So, uh, yes. Okay. So they can. So a lot of that data in there is probably location. And uh, right. Well, it could be multiple things, right? It could be directly from the cell sites itself through the phone company's man or you know interactive uh, mm -hmm. management software for the cell tower radios, and then it also could be. Um, individual information that they pulled down like when they had his phone in custody they could have done a data dump from the cell phone as well to get things like what files he had in there if there was any incriminating photos or videos or anything like that oh uh barry Sh or off topic with barry shot says i know where he got the money from to buy all those vehicles his home cost 178,700. he got a mortgage of two hundred thirty four thousand one hundred seventy nine dollars that means he could have spent 55,000 uh, to buy new cars and motorcycles. He's had those I I don't know but I'm pretty sure that he had those cars longer than he's had the house. I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure of that too. Yeah. But he could have got himself out of credit card debt or something else that he had accumulated to purchase those things in the past or to operate his business in the red. He could have right. been taking out small loans to keep his business afloat prior to buying the house too. Right. Well yeah, or yeah, or uh you know, he could have yeah, I mean or paid him a mirror with that. I don't know. <laughs> that's probably what he did. <laughs> if, if that's the case, I don't know, but who knows? I mean, the guy's got so many loose ends. I mean, you know, they let him out for what a couple of months to, to get things together and divest his business. Right. Right. But think about this. Think about the amount of things that he's got to close out and tie up before he goes away for a while. And then there's a very good possibility that at the end of his hearing, uh, they're going to probably remand him to custody uh, immediately. Right. So, you know, he's got all these vehicles he's got to sell. He's got to buy this equipment. He's got to, you know, all of this stuff that he's got to do, um, you know, before he goes away. And I bet you it feels like time is flying for him right now. I mean, I wouldn't, um, you know, um, I wouldn't, I wouldn't envy that guy. I mean, he's got himself in a bad spot. So. Yeah. And if I want to hear, uh, uh, somebody was telling me that he sold all of his vehicles already. Hmm. Did you see the thing on uh, on Reddit where he was saying that, uh, or what somebody had put on there? Um, you know, these, these were for a, a company that uh, escorts uh, oversized loads. This wasn't anything to do with a, a funeral escort in Florida. You guys made some stupid assumptions, and it was obviously uh, not true. But you know, I mean, it was it was uh, it was Jeremy stuff. So um, Stangmaster, there was a question. Uh, no. Trial Monday? No, that was postponed, and I think it's out till the tenth, if I recall, right? Uh, I thought it was uh, which uh, orange. So he had a trial that was scheduled for this last Monday. Oh, and, that that no, yeah, that was the other one. No, I that was pushed out pretty far, actually. I'm pretty sure. I thought it was until next Tuesday or when I think it was next Wednesday. Yeah, let's take a look. It was just a hearing. Then they got something else that's moved out to August. They keep pushing, pushing, pushing. And the same excuse. Amir's not ready yet. Yep. Well, he's going to need more time now with a whole terror bit of hard <laughs> drive. <laughs> and Jeremy, I'm going to need you up your retainer. I got to go spend a hundred bucks on a hard drive. I can just imagine that conversation, right? Oh my God. Your Honor, I was unable to um, process this data because my uh, cheap hard drive failed. Uh, I'm going to need another two weeks. Wait for that. Let's take a look. But that is a hard hit, though. Imagine having to go and represent somebody on next Tuesday and the previous Tuesday they hit you with that. I mean, think about how many pages that must be to be, you know, literally a tear of it. Yeah. Yeah. I, I couldn't imagine. It's, I can't even stand having 40 gigabytes on my phone, let alone going through that crap, let alone. I, I couldn't imagine a, a, hard, a whole entire one terabit hard drive. Robert Bradley says the next video should be about Amir's retirement plans, all courtesy of Jeremy. Well, maybe, but Jeremy's going to have to pay him, right? Yeah. I mean, what kind of retirement are you going to get on 18 dilapidated, formerly owned by municipality vehicles, right? Right. Okay. The uh, Osceola uh, failure to report that got continued on the 28th of June. Uh, Pre-trial is July the 6th, and the jury trial is on the 21st. Or, I'm sorry, 26th of uh, July. So, they're going to keep on, they're gonna keep on keeping on here. And just keep dragging this thing out. 
That's for sure. And then did you see the thing about the, uh, you know, the attorney in Florida getting his uh, uh, ransomware demand? I, I kind of briefly saw that. I, it was getting ready yeah. for this video. Uh, yeah, I, yeah, I did see. I heard something about that. Yeah, it was posted um, to the uh, YouTube forum by uh, Real World Police. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It looks like the uh, the impersonating charge, Matthew, uh, pre-trial is on the 11th of August, and the actual jury trial is uh, the 23rd. That one was continued as well on the 28th, and they pushed that all the way out to August. Wow. wow. That's crazy. Buying and, the time, right? Yeah. 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 I mean, that's all this is, is just buying the time here. Um, yeah, continue, can, or yeah, continue, cancel, cancel, continue, reset, 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 hearing hell, reset, continue. That's insane. That That is insane. It's at, at what point do they just throw in the towel and just say, we're, you know, we're, we're going to go on here with us. We're, we're going to move forward. Yeah. So, enough is enough. Well, but when you're, when the judge, you know, uh, is your former, uh, uh, Peer at a partner at a law group, right? Right. Yeah. Yeah. It's the street. It's the legal law. Thanks, yeah. street. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. So, well, we had a little fun last night at Jeremy's expense with some uh, videos of my vacation footage. Yeah. Well, anybody, kind of who, who all saw it? Did anybody here see that? Oh, they probably, well, the majority of the people here probably saw that video. Yeah, there was, we had like 400 views, like almost immediately. I thought that was fantastic. Yeah. So thank oh, you yeah. everybody That's for it. jumping on there. We had a little fun with it. There were some claims that I uh, plagiarized police tube on that, but I mean, come on. Police tube drove around and just, I, I went back. I actually wasn't aware that uh, police tube anything, you know, did anything even similar to that. But then I went back and saw his video where he was driving around in his car, yelling at people with his dubbed over sirens and lights. And that was hilarious. But what we did because we stole Jeremy DeWitt audio fair and square from the internet, just like anybody else can. Yeah, and I put, <laughs> you know, I put a GoPro camera on myself and I went <laughs> for a drive out of my neighborhood and through downtown. And, uh, <laughs> oh, we, we dubbed over some sirens on it. And my God, that was so fitting. We're like downtown between these two buildings and you've got this echoing siren. I mean, he did it just perfectly. And then the, the second part of that is when we're, when we're out, uh, <laughs> out in Montana on the Continental Divide. And that was my son riding the ATV that I rolled up next to and I screamed, I'm out of gas. Uh, <laughs> that was my son. He, we, he, we were actually on the trail and I noticed he was slowing down and then he stopped. So I rolled up next to him and the real story was that that bike had been sitting in storage for a couple of months. And uh, my brother had turned off the uh, vent on the gas cap. So we, uh, <clears throat> And we got about two miles from his house and it, it basically vapor locked because it pulled a vacuum on the gas and the gas couldn't flow into the carburetor and the bike couldn't run. So we stopped. He opened up the gas tank. It relieved the negative pressure. He turned the vent on and then we rode away and we had a lot of fun that day. And then the, the very last end of it was actually uh, my brother was riding that ATV and we got up to the top and we were talking about the suspension on the bike that my son was riding, which was the one furthest away from me. You did that audio dub over and that was just fantastic that I, I i couldn't have done i mean i probably could have but it would have taken me way longer you whipped that out in you know a half hour or so that was fantastic so we had a lot of fun with that and i hadn't actually seen the finished product of it until it went online last night and i i watched it about about nine times in a row and had laughed so hard that my wife thought i was crying <laughs> so we had a lot of fun there. there there might be another one coming pretty soon the waterways <laughs> Yeah, I heard the, about the, that. the high the high seas. We'll see. Yeah, yeah maritime <laughs> one is that what it was? Yep, Mar maritime yeah. one. <laughs> <laughs> Search and rescue team. Nice, and the police tube video reaction. I can't believe how quickly he got that out. I mean, he yeah, you know, he was that like and flown later. out his door. Police tube, you're watching. What are you writing in that video? I'm just. He, he was. He he's probably hacked my computer, and he's probably he was probably watching what I was doing. Yeah, he probably listened to my phone call with you when we were talking about what we were going to do, right? Yeah. Hanson had he purchased the lights and sirens from Jeremy's eBay site, and the account got suspended. That is awesome. Police tube, yes, you're super fast. Tell me what you were writing. <laughs> There's speculation. I'd love to know the truth. To me, I'm guessing you were writing some sort of a dual sport because it kind of sounded like it. 
but it was a BMW 1200. Huh. I, thought was, I thought it was a scooter, like a Vespa. Was was that by chance a um, former Metro State vehicle? Hmm. Hmm. It could be. I guarantee it, it may be him. It may be. It may, it may be him. It, it may be Jeremy. 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 J E R M Y. Right. Even he spells it wrong. Oh no no no! It's his last name. He spells wrong. What was I thinking? Right. J Dewitt. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So we've we've extended the invitation um, two or three times. I'd really like to get Police Tube on here to yeah. You know, um, you, you to, can wear uh, you can you can wear your little mask with yeah. with your glasses and your helmet on. Outdoor films, buddy. I got a question for you. When you're riding your ATVs, do you figure it out real fast? Of course I do. It's all learning by experience, right? That's what it's all about. Did you know that Jeremy was last seen at his address June 2 and Rohania Mohammed Dewitt on June 23? I'm not stocking his house. So I didn't, I didn't uh, yeah, I that. don't know, man. <laughs> I have no time. <clears throat> uh, anyhow. Uh, outdoor films, you should come over and uh, ride with us next time I go over to Lewis and Clark County. It's beautiful out there. I'd love to live there. My only problem with living there, I, if I was to move over to Montana, I would I would have to live like in Helena or Missoula or maybe great, not so great falls or whatever. It's just too far out. I mean, I just couldn't imagine, you know, a 45 mile drive to go buy a loaf of bread, you know, but it's beautiful out there. Harsh winters, though. Harsh, I have, harsh, harsh, harsh. I have one request. I don't know if they'll, they'll, anybody will be able, be able to hear it. Can I, can I just play that last part of the video? From last well, time? hang on a second. Before you do it, Police Tube says, I only just now got the invite and email right now. Well, then click the link and join. We'd love to have you. Yeah. I'll see who this guy really is. Yeah. <laughs> Put him next to me and prove he's not me, please. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We, we, just have, we just have to nip this one. Come on, man. And, and, and again, my hands are right here. I'm, I'm not typing. I'm, you know, it's, it's real obvious that I'm not him, but I'd really like to drive this home for, for the spectators and, and conspiracy theorists out there that <laughs> I'm somehow running two different channels or running a channel and being on your channel at the same time somehow. Come on, please do. Yeah, watch out. Watch out. Jacket, shirt oh, on. He's here. Real quick. Look who's here. Dude, look. Dude. Whoa. Come on, please do. Where's your camera? As they say, All right, hold on. I might have to put on some headphones. Bring the radio here. down. <laughs> this is so exciting. I've never been live on the air before. Well, we've never had you live on the air, so welcome. Yeah, I just now got the link, so I didn't even know this works. Now, how yeah, the heck I can, can I be myself. you if you're talking and me talking at the same time? And, and for, you know, put us right side by side. We sound nothing alike as far as I understand it. All right. This is this is hard to hear because it echoes in my hear, ear. So when I hear you, it's uh, very much delayed. But, oh. buddy, me and my four brothers, <laughs> we want to clear the air. You left our family... <laughs> When you were younger and you've always disowned us. Why? Now you're going live on YouTube disowning us. You moved away with your brother. And we're all hurt that you said that you're not related. Mom sold me on eBay. On the on the um, <laughs> channel for uh, Metro State. Don't you recall? You were real happy about it. You got the bigger bedroom. So you admit it. But we're not one of the same. We are not the same. That's true. You are our brother. I'm police tuber. <laughs> you could be the the fifth police tuber. <laughs> oh man! Oh, so, I, I okay. I'm just going to ask you this. Um, I know you don't know your. You know, we don't know your real name. You don't know my real name. Um, you know that I live in Seattle. I don't know where you live, but do we live even relatively close? Do we live relatively close? Is that what you said? Yes. At heart. I at, hope. at heart, I hope. <laughs> <laughs> I mean. Oh, my God. How, how many miles are you from Seattle? 
Oh, I don't reveal my location. My job is a very dangerous job, so it's important that the police tuber face remains anonymous. Right, right. Yeah, the funeral escort business is tough. I understand. There's a lot of competition, and they'll break your legs from what I understand if they figure yeah. out who you are. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, this is high-risk uh, YouTubing. <laughs> <laughs> I noticed that your uh, your brother has a police tu- or uh, has a channel as well, right? Um, no, my brother does not. Oh, On the one terabit hard drive, what do you think is hermetically sealed within that container? Jeez, I mean, where did they get this hard drive uh, from anyway? Is this his PC? The document says data dump. Yeah. Um, data dump. I mean, cell phone data dump. Yeah, cell phone data it. dump. Yeah. I mean, that's it's definitely not tower location. It would have to be something like his uh, all of his pictures and videos. And so this, uh, his text messages where it's got all the pictures that were sent and received. His yeah, so Flickr might, account. I don't know about <laughs> that, but, but you know, he, he probably downloads his uh, pictures and stuff to a certain hard drive. I know that they seized his computer and that's sitting in evidence and that's one terabyte and that's got a bunch of data on it. Uh, but I don't think they've actually looked at it because the investigation was shut down before they were able to go through all those files. Hmm. Wow. That's, that's sitting in evidence. Hmm. Hmm. Huh. So are you going to be at the uh, the Motor One trial? Is that your plan? No, I've never been to Florida. Oh, he's, he was trying to get the, I, I knew you were going with that. <laughs> that yeah, that I can tell you. <laughs> it, but he's like, buddy has a map up right now. He's like, I'm just going to check <laughs> that one off. Yeah, yeah triangulating my location right here. now. Let's see, go on to the next one. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, that's... Uh, that's a good, that's a lot of data. If that actually came from a phone, I mean, that, that's, uh, that, that's absurd. I mean, yeah, I mean his phone insane. is probably 128 gigabytes. So the hard drive right. itself is probably one terabyte, but it's probably got, you know, you know, I wouldn't want to know what's um, on that thing. Hey, so, uh, Mr. Tube, uh, what's the latest on your uh, YouTube channel allegedly getting shut down? Today's a 30. I thought it was supposed to be down by then. Well, they initially they said seven days and initially they said, if you're not a partner, it gets shut down right away. But since right. I was a partner and we're monetized, uh, they give you a seven day grace period. So I filled out the uh, counterclaim. And I mm. guess once you, if you, if you counterclaim it, then it extends to 10 days, they initially said, and that allows the claimant, you know, Jennifer, or Jeremy, Metro State to file a lawsuit in court and then prove to YouTube that they've filed a lawsuit and then the channel will stay shut down. So initially, YouTube said it was 10 days, which ends today. But I just recently got another email that it says 10 to 14 days. So hmm. I, I emailed YouTube this morning, but I just got an automated email back saying that my email looks like it can be resolved through the website. Uh, frequently asked questions. So kind of an automated response. So I'm just kind of hoping uh, things will be resolved by the 4th, which is July 4th. So hopefully that will be my Independence Day. So, I mean... Obviously, they're not. I mean, you gotta you gotta think that Jennifer is not going to have the resources, the time, or the desire to try to go down the whole frivolous <laughs> lawsuit. You know, really? I mean, do do you really see her getting a hold of a lawyer and trying no. to sue you for anything? Does she have anything? Probably not, right? Oh yeah, she has uh, lawyers reaching out to her saying, "Hey, if you need anything, you know, I'm here for you. I fully support you. You know, whatever you need, let us know." Plus, but she put everything in the public domain. So how should how could she? Yeah. That's- well, it would, it would be nothing. I'm not saying she's going to do this, but it would be nothing to her to even go down to the courthouse and f- pay $75 or whatever it costs to file a civil suit and just have that. That way uh, she can send that paperwork to YouTube and that way it sticks. And she never even has to show up to court. It's not like I, I can she- sue her and collect. And it's not like she's going to be charged criminally for doing anything. You right. know? It's a hearsay. But that's $75 she doesn't have for a hotel that night. I mean, she, I wouldn't think she has $75 to do that, but you know, she does have the desire to possibly do that. And she definitely has the ability to go down to the court and start filing paperwork. It might even be $25, you know, she might even be able to apply for a waiver actually. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Play yeah. the indigent card, right? There you go. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. So, yeah. but, it, but I keep looking for my name all over the, in the public, you know, in the, in the court records to see if anything's been filed. I don't see anything that's been filed yet. So that's good. Well, wouldn't she have to have basically all your personal information in order to do that or just to Google it, provide that to her? Yeah. When I uh, filed a counterclaim, you know, that's when you have to provide your personal information. Got it. 
and then you have to sign your name electronically. It's an electronic affidavit. So yeah, she's That's got that. Good. Yeah, I have no problem giving that to her. You know, she can call me. She can uh, contact me. You know, I even called a mirror and uh, asked him because you know we've all got a cell phone number. I'm sure. <laughs> so <laughs> right, right. So you know, I called I, him. I up. don't, but okay. I haven't called I mean, yet. Yeah, I mean, it's it's one of Jeremy's first calls when he goes to jail. So if you have the call <laughs> records, um, but I called a mirror and I told a mirror, I was like, hey, this is police tube, uh, you know, and he was like, who? And I was like, oh, so you don't know me. But I, I told him, you know, I got this uh, legal notice with Jeremy DeWitt's signature on it. You know, is there something I can do for you guys? You know, I run this YouTube channel. And he was like, I, I haven't even heard of this. You know, what is it? And uh, so I told him about it. And he was like, well, obviously, I can't discuss any information with my about my client with somebody i don't know so can you email this info to me so i e i put together an email and emailed it to him and i never heard back from him i text messaged him just to let him know that i emailed him but no response back and just his response on the phone indicated that you know he wasn't involved in sending out like an affidavit to youtube right so so i guess my my question would be you know, you're familiar with the the channel that um, they're apparently joint running or, or whatever's going on, the, the Metro State channel. Yeah. What do you think the disposition of that that whole site is? Because you've got, uh, you, obviously, Jeremy was using it as a, you know, almost a daily upload as the day in the life of your favorite child molester. And then you've got uh, somebody else uploading videos that are intentionally um, you know, pointed to damage him. So what do you think happened there? Do you think she was running it all along or do you think that she got control of it? Do you think he got it back? Or I, I'm just curious to hear your perspective on, on what you think's going on there. Yeah. I mean, he's had that channel since I think 2012 or 2013 when he uh, was really building up Metro state. So, you know, that's his channel. Um, of course he gave her access to all of his stuff, you know? Uh, so she had access to his phone, his ring, uh, doorbell downloads, his emails, his Gmail, and of course, his YouTube account. She still has access to his YouTube account for sure. Um, so, you know. So it's like pretty much when he went to jail, it's like, it was like a, a free for all wild, wild west for her. Just, yeah, he trust he trusted her with oh, all that yeah. stuff. So. Oh, yeah. And then she just dumped it. I, I'm still curious, like, to why when they, they let him, uh, when they dropped those charges, the uh, Orlando charges uh, for the the Divi, the uh, Talk right now. The DV, like why <laughs> when the his pre-release agreement terms where he had to no contact with her, even though that case was already closed, uh, is it because she's a state witness? I don't know. I, th th that that part didn't make any sense. Yeah, I mean, even though the dating violence charge was closed, it seemed like uh, she, she was still ordered by name, or he was or it was he she was named as on all the other paperwork for him not to have any contact with her. So I don't know if that's still on there or not. I've called the people that I'm in contact with and they don't actually know either. So hmm. I don't know. I don't know if they're in contact exactly. I wouldn't yeah. imagine so. Yeah. Cause they do. They obviously they do not like the witnesses talking to the uh, defendant, <laughs> the defendant for a trial like that. It's just, you know, but usually that kind of tends to hinder the, the, uh, the trial even you know what i mean uh you know if they're in contact like that so because what's the prosecution got to go on if now you got the you got the uh witness and the defendant you know they're, like they're friends you, you know what i mean i mean i've got to imagine jeremy's pissed at her as well she just oh, dumped yeah. all this evidence against him that wasn't otherwise known like that insurance fraud claim and stuff yeah you know, that wasn't that, that was in rec on the record already but nobody had seen that video until jennifer had released it and the one about diffusing bombs and, and directing traffic and making traffic stops and all the other stuff that he did in the army when he was oh, yeah. <laughs> talking on that. I mean, that's damaging. And, and you know, it's got to be difficult in South or in, in Florida, you know, even in, anywhere in the state of Florida to find a judge and a jury that's never heard of Jeremy DeWitt in Metro State now. I mean, it, it's out everywhere. Yeah, it seems like it, of course, in our world. But everywhere I go, I, I, don't, I don't find anybody in real life that's ever heard of him. Well, okay. I'll give you an example. This morning, I was on a. I I have I've subscribed to a couple of Facebook groups, and one of them was uh, uh, so I see your state doesn't have vehicle inspections, right? And it's usually like jalopies running around with three different colored fenders, or a, a trunk missing, or just some car that just shouldn't be on the road due to rust or damage or just 
whatever the case, it, it obviously would be cited and stopped in, in most cases, but there's some states that don't do inspections and they'll pull you over for faulty equipment. Like if you don't have lights or something and they can do a safety inspection at that point, but it's not like you have to go in and get your car through a, a shop to like emissions or something to, to get tags. And so there, one of those, one of the things I saw this morning was this car that was just bashed in in the back and this guy is driving on the freeway and in the left lane, there is a, a, a state police motorcycle in the left lane. And I made a comment, uh, is that Jeremy DeWitt in the left lane? And there was like 25 people commented and liked and, hmm. and reacted to it. And then there was all kinds of quotes from Jeremy DeWitt. So this is an entirely different group. And they're, out of that group, there were several respondents uh, based on and that, that one. And that, that was from where you're at, right? Locally? No, that's, that's across the country. So, I mean, it's just. A, oh, that was online. Facebook. Yeah. Oh, of yeah. course. But in real life, I mean, that's a little different. Yeah. Right. Uh, yeah. D Tom brings the good point. Uh, do y'all think Jennifer has tried to talk to Jeremy? Uh, absolutely. What was yeah. that? The last or one of the second to last videos, uh, the one that was taken down uh, when she said that, like they met or something. Or that he's going to have a homecoming video coming soon or something. Yeah. Well, no, Probably no, but they, not. Yeah. But she said that uh, they, they met or talked or something. And she's like, that will come at a later date. Did you guys see that one? Yeah. Yeah, I'm sure they did. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, well, and she baited him into it, right? I mean, it was pretty obvious what's going on. I'm going to start lobbing bombs. I'm going to light this stuff on fire and throw it on the internet. I'm going to just make you look even more ridiculous than you already are. And basically, there's going to be a time where he, he says enough is enough. And I think, honestly, he was trying to bait her in or bait. She was trying to bait him into violating to get him thrown back in a slammer. That's just my guess on it. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, I forget what the date is. I'd have to look at my notes, but she actually went in uh, and this was just recently. She started testifying against Jeremy again. She went and started recording. Uh, uh, she has the, the, she started making new police reports against him with all this stuff, realizing that she's done with him, that he's been stringing her along all this time. And I guess they've got like three hours of body cam footage of her just basically trashing him and turning over all these new videos and stuff. Uh, so that was, I think that was just two weeks ago or so, maybe three weeks ago at the most. Wow. And then to the point of the body cameras, um, I, it made me think of something else. And that was specifically the the jail phone calls that had gone on for the time that Jeremy was incarcerated there. Yeah. Um, you know, obviously it's real easy to tell that during those conversations that uh, she's cutting and pasting those things together to fit a narrative. Mm -hmm. Do you think that there's going to be a point where all those are going to get released? Because I kind of figured by now they would be. Well, I mean, are those going to get released? I don't, I don't think so because those aren't part of the public record. Oh, the jail phone calls? No. Yeah, that's what that's what I heard. Yeah. Okay, because I mean, I remember being, you know, a while back when he was calling his mom and asking to get the family together, and those things became public. So I'm not sure how those got into the public domain. Yeah, good question. I don't know. Maybe they're just not going to be in the public record yet, or something, until the case is over. I don't know. But I was told that they're not available because they're not in the public record. Right. So. Yeah, I heard there. Yeah, I was told too that they're, they're exempt. Uh, phone calls were exempt, which is yeah. That's yeah, it was interesting because I got his call logs. I analyzed it on my channel where you can see all the uh, calls that he made. I don't know if you guys analyze those as well, uh, but you can see like the one of the first calls he makes is to her. Then he calls a mirror, and then he calls her over and over and over for the rest of the night until he sees a judge in the morning. That's when he gets a no contact order. Uh, then he starts contacting her on another phone. She has like a burner phone, you know. And so you can cl clearly see that he starts contacting her over and over and over on a second phone line. And then later it even switches to a third phone line. Just kind of interesting analyzing those records. Yeah, it's, it's really strange how that whole thing operates. And so, you know, I haven't gone down to the level and I, and I won't go down to the level of looking to see who he's called and for how long and all that. Cause I mean, well, there's, there's no a certain, yeah, well, there's just, I mean, it, I have a job. <laughs> I work all day long and uh, yeah, so do I. Actually, so anyway, so in the in the midst of all these calls to Jennifer, is he calling Rania too at the same time? He actually didn't call Rania until about what was it, the sixteenth or like May sixteenth or something like that. What? It was like it was like three weeks until he called Rania. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> so I wonder if yeah. she was going and actually visiting him in jail. I mean, mm. it, I don't think just, she wanted no. I don't, I don't think she wanted to talk to him at all. What he was doing he, uh, was calling his mom 
uh, Ursula and trying to get her to be like, hey, you got to contact Rania, starts talking to her. And then finally, uh, uh, Rania, he was able to call Rania and then mm -hmm. the calls to his mother stopped. So I can only imagine uh, that he's talking to his mom being like, you know, you got to tell her that I didn't do anything or this is I'm being set up or whatever until Rania was finally like, OK, I'll talk to Jeremy. OK. Uh, I'm going to officially concede to something here. You're on this. I mean, yeah. you are, you know, you're digesting this. You're going through it. I, I don't have the, the bandwidth to, to go to it at the, at the level that you're at. So with that, um, if there was ever like a, a, a degree in um, duetology, it would have to go to you. <laughs> so I, I'm just going to ask you this. What, I mean, you know, you've spent a lot of time thinking about this. You know, we've spent a lot of time thinking about this. What do you think is going to be the ultimate outcome? Do you, I mean, as far as the sentence, as far as what's going to happen between him and his wife, between him and his, you know, his, the rest of his family, his, his uh, you know, paramour. I mean, what, at the end of all this, if you had to make a prediction and, and write the ending for the Jeremy DeWitt saga, how would it end to you? Well, I mean, uh, when I was looking up Jennifer's ex-boyfriends, I saw that, I mean, let, let's not even call it Jennifer. You know, let's just say I was looking up somebody's ex-boyfriends the other day and uh, all of the boyfriends were either dead or in jail. So, you know, wow. Jeremy's the type of guy that could, could possibly be homeless one day. You know, after he, he has a successful business, he's married, he has it all, it seems. And then he loses it all uh, under these circumstances. And uh, maybe one day he becomes homeless because his mom is tired of dealing with him and he can't rely on her anymore. But. He's just he as gonna, bad as him. Uh, his mom? Oh, yeah. She was, uh, remember the one video where, he, like, oh, my mom said that if I wasn't there, that, but there's nothing they can prove. That just shows she's well, just as bad, like, basically uh, telling him to lie. I wouldn't say she's as bad as him, uh, but, you know, that's maybe where he got some of that from. You know, he, yeah. he she probably did her best to raise him uh, uh, after he his father left. And then he was looking for a role model. You know, she did her best. But, you know, I, I don't think that his sociopathic tendencies come from his mom. Uh, I think they came from his father. And then Dylan, his brother, kind of uh, idolized Jeremy as well because they spent a lot of time alone together with Jeremy watching Dylan. You know, uh, yeah. mom put him in charge, you know, so he can give, give Dylan direct orders. And so, you know, Jeremy and Dylan played a lot of, you know, time they played together and dylan looked up to him so he's get, kind of getting his sociopathic tendencies from jeremy right. but it's not as ingrained as it is in jeremy's dna his his dad uh his dad had a lengthy rap sheet too uh, uh jeremy's or uh, dylan's uh, uh jeremy's with uh the cocaine uh drug trafficking hmm. oh he yeah died pretty young too didn't he no nah, i i think he i think he was oh back in tw I actually i talked to his uh stepsister um, I just, uh, on messenger, I thought I, it was crazy. And, uh, he, and she's told me that, uh, I didn't get dive down into that, like the nitty gritty stuff like that. But, uh, Jer she didn't know Jeremy was her stepbrother until like when the dad passed away in 2013. And that's when she found out. And like, she said time to time, they would keep in contact and, uh, said that she, he had her believe that he worked for the Orange County Sheriff's Department. He helped them out when they were shorthanded. That's exactly what she told me. And yeah, that I, and I didn't. I wasn't like, oh, well, that's complete BS. I, you know what I mean. I didn't want to go down that route. But and obviously, I didn't get into the other stuff with her about like her her father. But uh, if you go and look, man, it, it it's pretty it's pretty brutal. The you know. Um, you know, the, with the arrest and it all lines up with when, you know, Jeremy's mom left him, and, you know, all, all of that, but he has multiple drug charges, resisting arrest, assault on a police officer. It, Don't we all? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, right. yeah. So, so get back to what uh, I think is going to happen to Jeremy. I think he has a plea deal that he can accept and that gives him five years to wrap up all the charges. I think that's still on the table. So at the very, at the very worst, I think he's going to accept that, but, I think he's in the psychological state, or at least he was last time I thought about it, that he, he can still beat this and uh, he can end up suing the city or the county and end up getting a big payoff for false arrest, false imprisonment, damage to his successful business. Uh, you know, they stole his Rolex, everything, you know, 
Uh, so he, I, I don't know if he's still hoping for a big payoff or if he's just hoping to get out of this alive. Well, Bill, they released Bill Cosby today, so anything's possible. <laughs> so, Mr. Tube, one of the one of the th theories I've heard and, and I've actually even kicked around was it's better the, than boob <laughs> or lube. Uh, <laughs> what do you think? I mean, you, you, you and I and and five zero, we've all sort of you know been seeing family. some of the, the hey, interactive uh, behavior of, of Jeremy and the way he he operates. You think that guy might just go on the lamb and disappear? Is he going to go on the lamb and disappear? I don't think he's actually going to run. You know, I think he you know he's he has deep roots in Orange County. You know, he, he knows a lot, a lot of people. A lot of people in the community still support him. A lot of people online still support him too. So, is he going to run? I don't think so. But you know, he could. So, you know, I've never been in any, any sort of trouble. I've never, I mean, I've gotten a couple of speeding tickets in my life. But, um, you know, you go to the judge, and most people will go to the judge. You go to the court and make an appearance and just be humble. You got your hat in your hand and say, "Look, I I screwed up." You know, I mean, you you guys got me dead to rights. I was going fourteen over the speed limit. I wasn't paying attention. Uh, I'd like to settle this. And I'd like to get this this handled and put behind me. And a lot of people would approach. A lot of things like that. Do you think he's going to be solemn and you know just okay, fine, let's just get this over with, and you know, or do you think he's going to be defiant all the way to the end? How could he uh, be solemn for something he didn't even do? He did know? nothing wrong. Right? All those videos I mean, on Real World Police, that wasn't even him. But notice his behavior when he's in court. When he goes to court, he's entirely different. He he goes in there a lot of the time. I mean, he's you know depending on which personalities you know rotated to the surface that day. But uh, there's been a lot of the times where he's gone in there and he's just been kind of quiet and you know thank you your honor. And then then there's those times where he's trying to you know act like he knows more than his he's lawyer. The attorney, yeah, yeah. That's when Amir tells him you know if you say another word in there, I swear to God, I am I'm not going to it. represent you anymore. Yeah, that's when he's quiet. Yeah, you know, beat him up before he goes on the stand, right? But. I mean, and, and so like, as far as Rania, when this is all done, what do you think is going to be her, her story? You think she's going to be, you know, 50, 50 her way out of Florida and just make some distance between her and him or back to Egypt. If, yeah. If he goes I don't to know jail, about back to Egypt, no, I mean, she's definitely she, not going to Egypt. Who, who wants I, I, to go to I, Egypt? No offense to Egypt. I would love to. No, go to there's Egypt. nothing wrong with Egypt, but do you think she would actually leave the country or you think she would just go, you know, maybe a couple no. of States away to get some distance on him? I mean, I'm sure he's going to probably come back and try to sue for parental rights if he doesn't get to see his kid or something, right? No, I mean, she was uh, she was married before, so she'll get a divorce again and uh, continue on her life, continue to date. You know, she's got a successful job, a career, and uh, she is embedded in the community as well. So she's not going to leave Central Florida, but she's fed up with Jeremy. You can see her as she's riding in the back of the car. How she's just, you know, she hates this guy right now, you know? Yeah. I like to pretend yeah. that he's sleeping on the kitchen floor. She's slept. punishment. Yeah. You know, one of the yeah. one of the six bedrooms, right? Yeah, that's a six bedroom is the kitchen floor right in front of the refrigerator. <laughs> and the fifth one's probably out in the garage next to the other fridge, right? <laughs> other one's a doghouse. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's where he's at. <laughs> well, heck, you know, um, I, I don't uh, uh, five oh, you got anything else you wanna add to this? I mean, this has been great. I've I've wanted yeah. to I've wanted to have Mr. Tube on here for a long time.